Please welcome Olympic bronze medalist and Dancing with the Stars champion, Adam Rapon. <laughs> Hey everybody, um, I hope you guys are having a great night tonight. Um, it's quite a task to follow that video. Um, so many inspiring young people, it's so incredible. Uh, before I came out here, the makeup artist came up to me and she said, can we do anything? And, and I'm glad I told her this. I said, I'm gonna take a really heavy, heavy contour because as long, it doesn't matter if you guys think I'm inspiring, I just want you to think that I'm beautiful. <laughs> I have my, thank you so much. So I, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about myself. My name is Adam Rippon. I'm a figure skater. I'm a national champion. I'm a medalist from the 2018 Winter Olympics. And I am the oldest of six kids. I am from a small town called Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, and our big town is Scranton. I don't know why you're laughing, but... So, I have been skating for the past 18 years, and through that I've learned so many things, through sports, through skating. When I was young, I never found anything that I really liked to do. I didn't find anything that I felt like I was good at, and finally I found skating and it was something that I just wanted to do all the time. I kept begging my mom to bring me to an ice rink. I kept begging her, and she finally signed me up for the group classes, and to make a long story short, I started skating. In 2010, I tried out for my first Olympic team and didn't qualify, but it wasn't incredibly devastating. I was still very young. I still had the whole world at my disposal, I, I could do anything. And I was so thin, it was crazy. <laughs> like so thin, it was, I was 20, you know. Um, so my goal then moving forward, with getting ready, was to qualify for the 2014 Winter Games. At 24, this would be like the peak age for me to qualify for an Olympics. This felt like a do or die, now or never sort of moment for me. Getting ready for those games, if you remember, they were in Russia, and they came out with this anti-gay propaganda law. And as athletes, we did not know what that meant. The United States Olympic Committee told us that they would stand behind anything that we said, but they didn't know what it would mean for us once we were in Russia. So it was scary. We didn't know if we would be putting ourselves in danger or if we would be putting our teammates in danger, which would be worse. So I decided not to say anything. But I also didn't qualify for that Olympic team. And this pushed me to sort of like a rock bottom because I didn't want to be skating, I didn't want to have anything to do with skating, I didn't know what I wanted to do. But what I found was getting pushed to that rock bottom was the best thing that ever happened to me. I think that somebody who has nothing to lose has everything to gain. And when you're in that place of I have nothing to lose, it's one of the most liberating feelings you can ever feel. It can feel really scary because you feel like you don't have anything, but it's one of the most powerful moments that we as like human beings that we can experience because you're willing to do anything. You don't feel that weight of expectation. And so in that moment, that's when I started to live my true life. I decided I was going to come out publicly. I decided that I was going to take initiative within my skating career. I would come to my coach with different ideas of things that I wanted to do within my training. I was going to really kind of take command of my career and my life. And I did. And for the next four years heading into the Olympics, I just had this momentum 
and I just felt like everything was on my side. And then a year out from the Olympic Games, I broke my foot. But the crazy thing is, is that because of everything I had gone to, it had prepared me for that moment where I realized the Olympic Games really didn't mean anything. I had grown so much as a person, and I had been doing everything up until that point for all the right reasons. I was going into the rink every day because I knew I could do better, and I knew I could be better. I wasn't going just to go to the Olympics, because if you just want to go to the Olympics, we can all go. There's this website called Expedia.com, <laughs> and they have flights to anywhere you'd want to go. And I told myself, you know what, I'm using the wrong language. If I really want to compete at the Olympics, it's, it's more about the experience. So I told myself I would give everything I had to just be my very best when the time came for that decision for the team to be made. So I did everything I could, and I enjoyed every single moment. It was really hard. It took a really long time to get better, but I got better. And it prepared me to have the experience that I had at the Olympic Games, because I didn't just compete at the Olympic Games. I lived the Olympic Games. And I realized that I could live every single experience that I'm given the opportunity to have. Because while you're at the Olympics, you realize that it's more than just a competition. It's more than just one event that you do. You're representing your entire country on the world stage. But to represent your country to the best of your ability, you need to be able to represent yourself. You need, to be able, you need to be able to be yourself, but you need to know what does that mean? What does it mean to be yourself? Because you can just walk up here and be like, you know what, I'm being myself and just knock things over and that's just me. But it has to mean more than that. I mean, that is just me. Um, <laughs> but I realized that being myself meant being a role model to my younger self who didn't feel like there was anybody to look up to. I remember being really young and feeling so alone, like there was nobody like me. So I, deci I decided that being myself meant being a role model for that person. I decided that I would go into the competition and I would let my hard work speak for itself. And I, it also meant being honest. In every interview I gave, in every opportunity, if I was feeling nervous, I said, hell yeah. If I f was feeling good, I said I was feeling good, but I was honest, and I was, when I was asked tough questions, I made sure I answered them honestly. Since my time after the Olympics, I've realized that being yourself can be so powerful, because when someone can see themselves in you, you give them the permission to be them. And I think when I had the chance to go to the Olympics, a lot of people saw themselves in me. They saw somebody who is a hot mess disaster most of the time. <laughs> it's so true, though. They saw somebody that worked really hard, and we all work really hard. And I think they saw somebody who is honest with being uncomfortable or just being honest about being in a crazy situation and calling it crazy. But more than anything, what I realized and what I have heard from so many people younger than me, my age, and even much older than me, is how they saw themselves in what I was doing. And it's been so powerful. And all of you here today, you donate your time and you help so many people. And I didn't realize the power of just letting, giving people permission to be themselves, how much power that would make me feel like I had. And you don't know that what you say and all the things that you do, how that can affect people. Because people are listening and people are watching. And right now, more than ever, it's important that we speak up for the things that we believe in and that we act. And now, you guys, please help me welcome Bank of America Charitable Foundation President and Points of Light Board Member, Carrie Sullivan. 